Hello, it's me, Alex the Hunted. Been a while since my last video, hasn't it? A lot of things have happened since then. Apparently I'm a completely different evil person now, so that's something. But anyway, let's get into today's review. Um, it's a movie about two brothers who are separated from birth and reunite as adults. However, both have taken very different paths from the other, and it will all end in tragedy. Yes, this is War of the Gargantuans. Let's review it. So our movie begins with a boat in the sea, when a random giant octopus attacks. You know, it's that random giant octopus that always seems to pop up out of nowhere in most kaiju movies. I mean, it was in Godzilla vs. King Kong, where it had absolutely no effect on the plot. It was in Frankenstein Conquers the World, where it was just there for random reasons. And now it's in this movie, for completely random reasons that had nothing to do with the plot. Well, it attacks the boat and attacks the crew, but then all of a sudden it stops attacking. Why? Well, that soon answered that a strange human-like monster is fighting the octopus and quickly gets rid of it, where it retreats to randomly show up in another kaiju movie. The crew may think they're safe, however the creature then turns its attack to the ship, smashing it into our opening title. Yes, this is the American version of the movie I'm watching. I mean, I did just do a subtitled movie and, well... Reading subtitles be hard. Actually, there are some really big differences between the Japanese movie and the American version. And it wasn't just an American studio that just came in and changed a few scenes. No, this was from day one planned to be two separate movies by Toho. One which was set for release in Japan, which had mostly Japanese actors, they were the main characters and had the main influence on the plot. And for the American version, they just drafted in a random American actor and basically had him take part as the main character, whereas the actual main character of the Japanese version was now relegated to a secondary character. So in effect, they basically filmed the movie twice. Anyway, an American scientist man gets a phone call from the military, saying that one of the survivors from the boat wreck says that he saw a giant monster and is calling it a gargantua. And scientist man says that yes, he had a gargantua, but it escaped five years ago. But that can't possibly have anything to do with this now, would it? So scientist man goes to see the only ship survivor, who talks about the horror of what he saw. Basically, the Gargantuan sank his boat and chased after all the crew that escaped, eating them all one by one, and he was the only survivor. And this is one of the actual few Toho Kaiju movies where you see the Kaiju eating people. Scientist man and assistant lady deny that it could possibly be their Gargantuan, saying that it was raised with humans before it ran away, and it was completely friendly, as we see in a flashback, where we see the- Oh dear God! That's the baby?! Cut to a fishing boat, where they've just caught the biggest catch of their lives. Unfortunately, that catch is the gargantuan, so their lives will be very, very short. So the fishing village tries to pull the net ashore, only for the gargantua to appear and be very annoyed by this net, and tries to get it off him, and maybe have some lunch on the side. A news report comes out about the gargantuan, but Scientist Man still denies that it could possibly be their gargantua, as they discuss what it could be. Well, whatever it is, it considers man an enemy. No, I think it considers them food. Also, they find footprints on a mountain, which makes them think that maybe they could be two gargantuas. And while that's going on, they also get some fur from one of the boat wreckages and examine it, seeing that it comes from a sea animal. And while that's going on, we cut to a plane that's coming into land at the airport, which has characters that we've never seen to this point in a completely random location, so we know that absolutely nothing at all will happen, apart from the gargantuan appearing and attacking the airport. As people flee in a stampede to get away from the Gargantua, the Gargantua gets ready to have a feast. The airport immediately. The airport immediately. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. It's like an all-you-can-eat buffet and I'm the only customer. Come here, you His meal is cut short when the sun comes out, causing him to panic and run into the ocean and disappear. So they figure out that this Gargantuan is used to the darkness of the sea. How he can breathe underwater is never explained, but then again, Godzilla could get away with that for years, so... Meh. Anyway, they have a plan that if the Gargantuan appears at night, all they do is basically turn on all the lights in the city to make it look like it's daytime. We cut to the city, where we see that a woman is about to perform a song, and I'm sure we'll just cut away to something else. I mean, it's not like they're gonna perform the whole song, right? Right? Oh dear God! 
Shut up! Get off the stage! Where the hell's the kaiju? Oh, thank god there's a terrible blue screen. That means something's gonna happen. Yes, that's right. Go on, go on, kill her. Eat her! Eat her! No! Oh, well, she might have fallen to her death from that height and... Wow, this scene is taking me to a dark place. Anyway, Gargantuan is afraid of the lights and runs away into a village and a wooded area. The military follow him, blasting more lights at him and getting him to run away even more into a tank ambush which fires at him. And as usual, the tanks do absolutely nothing and the Gargantuan basically just destroys them. So the military come up with a new plan to drive the Gargantuans into a trap where they can use their new weapon, lasers, to destroy him. Oh, sorry, I mean... We can destroy him with our deadly lasers. Emphasis on the deadly. So we get a montage of the military setting everything up for their attack. And it's set to some really, really intense music when all basically we are seeing are army men moving wires across the trees to plug into other things. I mean, what else will this intense music be played with? Anyway, the military find out that Gargantua is taking a bath and start to draw him towards their trap. However, for some tension, the military isn't quite ready yet, because they still haven't plugged everything in yet, or something like that. So this scene goes on for an insanely long time, like 10 minutes of this, but finally it ends with the deadly lasers blasting the Gargantua in the knees, and they fire their maser tanks, which will become the military's default weapon against kaijus. Why? Well, for once, the military have come up with a weapon to fight Kaiju, and it's effective! Yes, the Mazer tanks actually injure the Gargantua! They did it! They finally made something effective! Celebrations! And they continue to blast the shit out of him. I mean, my god, it's like five minutes of this guy getting shot. And they don't hold back. I mean, they show him all bloodied up and with cuts and, in, and writhing in pain. He's not making this out alive. And then he makes it to the river where they've put electrical currents into it, which basically continues him even more arriving in pain as he basically gets electrocuted to near death. But then, out of nowhere, another Gargantuan appears, a brown one who pulls out the cables and saves the other Gargantuan, taking him away like he's his best bud, dragging him home after a drunken night out. So with two Gargantuans, the military need a new plan. But they have to find them first, so as they search, Scientist man and assistant lady find some more green fur and figure out that the two Gargantuas are actually brothers. What a twist. And then we cut to basically Japanese tourism videos. Come visit Japan's countryside and see our lush mountains and forest areas. Enjoy the calm serenity of our vast lakes and see the local wildlife. And you'll get plenty of exercise as you run for your life from a giant man-eating kaiju. Just kidding, there's no chance of escape. Come visit Japan. So yes, yeah, stupid people, including scientist man and assistant lady, walk through the area where they have been told that the green gargantua has been sighted. And oh look, the green gargantua comes and starts chasing them, eating a load of them. But scientist man and assistant lady get away by assistant lady falling off a cliff. But it's okay because scientist man almost raises his voice in concern. Oh, and also the brown gargantuan shows up to save her. Things don't go very well for him. Okay. 
Okay, I have a simple question. Did the suit actor inside the brown gargantuan suit actually break his leg during this scene? Because if you look at how much his leg twists when the rock hits it and the instant reaction of pain that the suit actor gives out makes me think that he actually genuinely broke his leg in this scene and they just left it in the movie. Anyway, the brown gargantuan saves the assistant lady and limps off to his other brother who has feasts on a load of stupid people. And this is by far and away the best scene in the movie because without any dialogue and with just the gargantuan's body language, you know exactly what they are thinking. The brown gargantua sees the clothes on the floor and we straight away see the anger in his face and his body language as he grabs the tree, knowing what his brother has done. And the green gargantua just sits there not showing any remorse or even cares about what has happened. And so the war of the gargantuan begins with a tree slap. This fight is short as the green gargantua basically runs away. Oh, hang on, wait, I think I can improve this scene. Run away! Run away! Run away! Run away! So the next part of the movie is basically the green gargantua running away and the brown one giving chase after him. And the military try to shoot him but he just jumps over them like he doesn't even give a shit. Maybe the military should be using those super effective maser tanks, I don't know, maybe we should be using that. So the military give chase and assistant lady tries to convince the army not to attack the brown one because it's a good monster. But they won't hear it saying that they're better off killing both of them. Soon they lose both the gargantuan until the green one shows up in Japan. As everyone is evacuated, we cut to a random guy and his girl in his brand new car. And what does this have to do with anything? Absolutely nothing. We don't even see the car get destroyed or anything like that. So I guess it was some kind of product placement or something? I don't know. Anyway, Green Gargantuan attacks and the scientist man and assistant lady stay in the city to try and save the brown one. Only for them to run into the green one. Who gives chase? Safe in an underground subway, assistant lady does something really, really stupid. As they have just run away from the green gargantua, she thinks that it's the brown gargantua that is coming. So she goes up the stairs and oh look, it's the green gargantuan. And he grabs her and tries to eat her. I mean seriously, this character hasn't done anything stupid up to this point. So why would they have her do something like this dumb for no reason? Basically it's just to put her in peril for when the brown gargantua shows up. Which he does. And Greeny drops the assistant lady to what should be her death because it's quite a height that she falls from and she falls onto marble steps, which would have killed her. But no, she just gets a little bump on the head. So the two gargantuans do battle and this is definitely one of the best fights in all of the Toho movies. Because both of the kaiju suits are really, really light, it means that the actors inside have a lot more maneuverability and can really do some more quick and more difficult moves. It really makes this fight much more entertaining and much more fast paced. This is also one of the longest fights in any Toho movie, coming in at around about 20 minutes and it's a real slug. And it just keeps building up and building up and it keeps going and going and going, both monsters beating the ever loving shit out of each other. So Scientist Man tries to make a last plea to spare the brown gargantua. However, it comes to nothing and he has to break the news to his assistant. What's happening? Sorry, Kami. I did the best I could do. I called everyone but the SPCA. But the only thing we can do now is hope that the brown one survives and that the cells don't multiply. I mean, can't you tell by the emotion in my voice that I am devastated by this? I tried. I really tried. As the fight continues, the green gargantua starts to get the upper hand until the maser tanks arrive and blast the crap out of him again. But they still keep fighting, even falling into the ocean. And they start fighting with ships. Oh my god, this scene is awesome. As the fight continues, the two heading more and more out to sea. It's very clear that the writers wrote themselves into a corner and had no idea how to end this fight. Because out of nowhere, with no mention at all until this moment, a volcano appears. And starts to explode. And the two gargantuas are too busy fighting to try and escape. And while we don't see them die, we are just told that by the scientist man that they are both doomed and we don't even see a body or any of them die. It's basically just, we have no idea how to end this movie, so Random Volcano kills both of them. And it's no real wrap up, it just sort of ends there.
And that was War of the Gargantuas. It's really, really good. It's definitely the best non-Godzilla Toho movie. And I would definitely say something that you should check out. I mean, I would say that the Japanese cut is better than the American cut because the American actor in the American cut could clearly not give two shits and he just sounds bored and monotone throughout his entire performance. But apart from that, everything in this movie is really good. It's well paced, it doesn't feel boring at any point. The monster fights are really good and you can actually feel sorry for the Gargantua, the brown one, because He's clearly a good guy, but the bad stuff keeps on happening to him. It's definitely one of the best Toho movies that doesn't feature Godzilla, and I would highly recommend anybody watch it. The fight is really good. It's maybe a little long, but it's really, really good, and the miniatures only make it even better. These are some of the best miniatures that Toho have ever done. The buildings sort of don't just collapse. They crumble away when the monsters fall into them, like, like a building would. They're very, very good, and they're very well detailed. I would really recommend you watch this movie. Any Toho or Kaiju fan, any monster movie fan, should definitely check this movie out. And with that out of the way, let's head back to the wheel, and I will see you guys next time when I review... Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. Yes, it's finally time to do a Mechagodzilla movie. I'll see you then.